uh, let us thank our God, Holy Trinity, for in their great mercy, they have given us this gift of the divine will. And uh, really to make us worthy of it in entering into it, let us um, uh, beseech our God to empty us of our um, weaknesses and all our um, sinfulness. And enclosed in the heart of our mother, and with Namina Luisa, let us enter into the glorified humanity of our Lord Jesus, fusing ourselves in his most holy humanity, our soul with its three faculties, our body with all its members and senses, and our heart with all its affections and desires. And so fused in him and in his divinity, together let us enter into the liturgical celebration of the world for the third Sunday of Lent. Our theme, Die Zealously for Souls, the Living Temples of God. Sister Annie, the, pray the prayers before the Senaquel. Good evening, everyone. Come divine will to pray in our prayer. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Prayers before the divine will, Senakel. Create in me a clean heart of God and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who instructed the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us in the same spirit to relish what is right and always rejoice in your consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Prayer before the Senakel. O Holy Will, as we begin our Senakel, we pray you, we beg you, we implore you not to leave us, not even one instant, so that you speak, you write, you listen in us. You will make yourself known and make known how you want to be the life of all in order to give your goods to all. If you let us do it, we won't be able to make you known as you want because we are incapable. But if you do it, you will triumph. You will be known and you will have your kingdom in our Senakel and in the whole world. O Holy Will, with your power, you eclipse all the evils of the creatures. You put your almighty end so that they leave the way of sin and find themselves in the way of your divine will. To you, Queen Mother of the Divine Fiat, we consecrate this Senakel in a special way so that your love, your maternity, may be spread throughout the readings and inspirations we share to call your children to live together with you in that same will whose kingdom you possess. As we start kneeling at your feet, we implore your maternal blessing, our love and our life, your will has the virtue of multiplying your life for as many human beings that exist and will exist on earth. And we, in your will, want to form as many Jesuses in order to give the whole of you to each soul in purgatory, to each blessed in heaven, and to its being living on earth. So we begin invocation to divine will in all our actions i am nothing god is all father i love you come divine will to think in my mind to circulate in my blood to look with my eyes to listen in my ears to speak in my voice to breathe in my breathing to beat in my heart to move in my motion to suffer in my suffering and may my soul consume and fuse with your will 
be the living crucifix immolated for the glory of the Father. To pray in me and then offer this prayer to yourself as mine to satisfy for the prayers of all and to give to the Father the glory that all creatures should give you. To infuse in me the faith of Mary most holy in order to possess you as she possess you. To infuse in me the hope of Mary most holy in order to desire you as she desired you. To infuse in me the charity of Mary most holy in order to love you as she loved you. To adore in me and since your will multiplies acts to the infinite, thus I intend to give you the satisfaction as if all had assisted at Holy Mass and give to all the fruit of the sacrifice and impetrate salvation for all. Amen. Trinity Prayer, ever holy and indivisible Trinity, I adore you profoundly, I love you intensely, and I thank you perpetually for all and in the hearts of all. Ever holy and indivisible Trinity, I adore you profoundly, I love you intensely, and I thank you perpetually for all and in the hearts of all. Ever holy and indivisible Trinity, I adore you profoundly, I love you intensely, and I thank you perpetually for all and in the hearts of all. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, let us enter into the liturgy of the Word. From the divine minds, the divine minds, the divine. Zeal for the Father and for his house will lead Jesus all the way to the cross. His is the zeal of love which leads to self-sacrifice. Not that false zeal to serve God motivated by self-interests and by the pursuit of material gain. Indeed, the sign that Jesus will give as proof of his authority will be precisely his death and resurrection. In today's gospel, St. John notes, but he spoke of the temple of his body. With Jesus' paschal mystery, begins the new worship. His spirit of love will be given to believers who will serve God in wisdom, truth, and love and become true living temples of God, especially as we live our life in His will. Come divine will to read in my reading with Mama Mary and Mamina. First reading, the Lord gave the Ten Commandments to Moses so that people might know that true worship consists in serving God with loving hearts. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all, all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, the place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not Take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not live unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep the holy Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother, that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Please continue, Brother Jerome. Second reading, St. Paul proclaims that it is in Jesus' cross that we learn the sublime wisdom of God. In His infinite knowledge and love, God gives us His Son to redeem us by His suffering. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Fused in the divine will, let us all stand to honor the Holy Gospel. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Father Benji. Some divine will, read in my reading. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory, Glory to, to you, you O Lord. Lord. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and dogs, as well as the money changers seated there. He made the whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, Take this out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of the scripture, Zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to them, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for four to six years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he, held, he when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus has spoken. While he was, while he has, he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover. Many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs. He was doing, for Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise Lord to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, while uh, uh, preparing for Brother Benji's um, uh, gospel reflection and sharing. Okay. We continue to sit on the lap of Mother Mary and enclosed in her immaculate heart. With her, let us continue pondering the words of her son as we enter in his very act of cleansing the, te the temple. In the light of the teachings of the Holy Mother Church, Mr. Logi. Mr. Logi. The logi. So, ano, naka, uh, come divine will in my reading with Mother Mary and Mama Mina Luisa. 
the temple prefigures Christ. Catechism of the Catholic Church, 593. Jesus venerated the temple by going up to it for the Jewish feast of pilgrimages, and with a jealous love, he loved this dwelling of God among men. The temple prefigures his own mystery. When he announces its destruction, it is as a manifestation of his own execution and of the entry into a new age in the history of salvation, when his body would be the definitive temple. Jesus is the temple. Cat Catechism of the Catholic Church, 586. Far from having been hostile to the temple, where he gave the essential part of his teaching, Jesus was willing to pay the temple tax, associating with him Peter, whom he had just made the foundation of his future church. He even identified himself with the temple by presenting himself as God's definitive dwelling place among men. Therefore, he is being put to bodily death precedes the destruction of the temple, which would manifest the dawning of a new age in the history of salvation. The hour is coming when neither or this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. What matters above all is that when the faithful assemble in the same place, they are the living stones gathered to be built into a spiritual house for the body of the risen Christ is the spirit, spiritual temple from which the source of living water springs forth incorporated into Christ by the Holy Spirit. We are the temple of the living God. Catechism of the Catholic Church, 1197. Christ is the true temple of God, the place where His glory dwells. By the grace of God, Christians also become the temples of the Holy Spirit, living stones out of which the church is built. The church, the temple of the living God. CCC 797. What the soul is to the human body, the Holy Spirit is to the body of Christ, which is the church. To this spirit of Christ as an invisible principle is to be ascribed the fact that all the parts of the body are joined one with the other and with their exalted head. For the whole spirit of Christ is in the head. The whole spirit is in the body and the whole spirit is in each of the members. This Holy Spirit makes the church the temple of the living God. CCC 364 The human body shares in the dignity of the image of God. It is a human body precisely because it is animated by a spiritual soul and it is the whole human person that is intended to become in the body of Christ a temple of the Spirit. Man, though made of body and soul, is a unity. Through his very bodily conditions, condition, he sums up in himself the elements of the material world. Through him, they are thus brought to their highest perfection and can raise their voice in praise freely given to the Creator. For this reason, man may not despise his bodily life. Rather, he is obliged to regard his body as good and to hold it 
in honor since God has created it and will raise it up on the last day. All, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son so that everyone who believes in Him might have eternal life. All supreme will come to reign upon the earth Invest all generations, win and conquer all. The end of my reading. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Sister Lorgi. Good um, evening, Father Frank. Father Frank is here. Good evening, po, Father Frank. Uh, good evening. Good evening. You have entered <laughs> in a very timely <laughs> moment. <laughs> so, yeah, I just entered. hear from you. Your gospel share, your much awaited gospel sharing. Wala pa pong nagano. Wala pa pong uh, nagbigay uh, ng gospel sharing. Oh. So yung gospel? Apo. Ano, na, gusto, na, nabasa na ninyo? Yes so, po. Okay. Basa po. Are you with Father Roland? Ha? Huh? Ah, yeah. Sam ah, kayo lang. Okay uh, No, no, no. I, I came alone. Ah, okay. Sige po, Father. Okay. So, actually, I usually connect these three Sundays together. The first Sunday is a temptation, and that is to make us real, open our eyes to the realities around us. We are surrounded by temptations, but temptations are not sin, but opportunities for us to affirm what we believe in, and that is what we do in the second Sunday of Lent, which is the Transfiguration. I usually call that uh, a goal setting. That is what we are invited to do, to set a goal for ourselves. What is it that we need to transfigure in ourselves? Now, the, the, the third Sunday, here... Uh, it talks about uh, uh, Jesus telling us that uh, uh, the temple is not really the building, but the heart which uh, that God has given us, and that uh, this heart must have a new life, and this new life is the one that we should try to more to work on uh, a new life in which uh, we spend more of our time focusing on Jesus rather than on material things. Because even in the church, sometimes uh, we spend more time with regards to decorating the place and so on and so forth. But what we should decorate is our heart. No? And that is where the temple of the Holy Spirit, our heart is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that is the, that is supposed to be what we are invited to, to do, to, to accomplish at the end of Lent, which is in which we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. In other words, uh, this whole direction I call it the trajectory of Lent, is towards Easter Sunday. And uh, Easter Sunday, I know I know that we have celebrated Easter Sunday so many times, but the question is, what is new that we, is expected of us during this coming Easter Sunday? What is new in my life that I should come up with? What is new in my life? What is new in my heart? That is that makes us closer to the beloved Son of God. This is my beloved Son. You know, my I'm well pleased. So that is the one that we should try to ask ourselves. Uh, as a matter of fact, <clears throat> in the Gospel of today, we are talking about how Jesus, uh, how they should celebrate the Passover. But the Passover is re recalling the event in which instead of being uh, subjected to death, we were 
given the opportunity to to new life, uh, which is what uh, the new life, which is uh, <clears throat> a time in which we are liberated from our sinfulness, liberated from our slaveries, <clears throat> liberated from our selfishness, from our uh, uh, self-seeking endeavors. So Easter Sunday is supposed to be a day of liberation. But uh, all of this, it's good for us to realize that no matter how much we try, it is always the grace of God that counts. However, let us bear in mind that the God would like to give us the grace, as many graces as possible. But it's up to us how much are we going to, to receive. In order to receive these graces, we must little by little remove any obstacles to these graces. And uh, <clears throat> definitely, the seven capital sins are obstacles. And we should try to put them all out. Uh, if you want also to use the analogy of St. John of the Cross, talking about the seven story mountain, <clears throat> here it talks about not only uniting myself, uh, uh, not only purging ourselves from sinfulness, but uniting ourselves to Jesus and eventually contemplating on Jesus and nothing else. And this is the divine will. Contemplating and uh, for us, when we talk about fusing our will to the the divine will, is removing anything that will hinder us from that fusion. Uh, and the only we can remove that, of course, with the grace of God. But it is our willpower, our decision that counts. Uh, we say in Tagalog, nasa Diyos ang awa, nasa tao ang gawa. We still need to do our part. And our part is basically removing any obstacles so that we can focus only and solely on the divine will, on Jesus, the risen Lord. That is my uh, how I would like us to, to look at the gospel of the third Sunday of Lent. Uh, sometimes the gospel is about... <coughs> The uh, Lazarus being restored to life. But again, it talks about the same thing. It's a new life that uh, awaits us. It's a new life that we should try to, to, to focus on, that we should like to address, that we want. And that is the new life is a divine will, the kingdom of the divine will. That's my sharing. Uh, sorry for being late. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Paul Father, for uh, still uh, showing up. Because uh, we are we are always waiting for both of you. Even Sister Lalin has not come. We don't know what happened. So anyway, uh, you're you have given us a very uh, illuminating sharing about today's gospel. So anyone who would like to clarify or to ask from Father anything about the gospel and the readings? Father? Yeah. Ah, ano, according to height, ikaw na alam muna, Kuya. Kayo na po, Kuya. <laughs> according to age. <laughs> anyway, Father Roland. Hello. Hey, Father, um, Hello, Beji. Uh, Hello, Father Frank. Tanong ko lang, yung, eh, yung part ng Bible na si Jesus Christ, eh, kinuha niya yung kanyang uh, robe, ah, yung kanyang tali, tapos pinampalo doon sa mga taong ginagawang palengke, simbahan. Is no. that act of Jesus? Uh, Is, how do we look at it? Yung kanyang pagiging galit. Does, some people say, this proves that Jesus is human. Something like that. So, tama po ba yung pananaw na yun? 
well, <clears throat> we can interpret it in many ways now. Uh -huh. But uh, <clears throat> the best thing, Siguro, <clears throat> instead of uh, interpreting it as the human imperfection, we should look at it as the <clears throat> the the saying uh, of Jesus in another context. Uh, the uh, the house of the Lord eats me up. Now he is very very uh, anxious. He is very zealous for our salvation, and therefore, when we see it, it's just like it's just like uh, seeing your child playing with mud. No, and you have corrected the child so many times. You to put emphasis, you know, put emphasis so that he will he will never forget that what he's doing is wrong, then that is the same thing as whip out of court and drove them out all, all them all out of the sample area. It's just like putting emphasis on what we we really mean business. We really mean that uh, the we really mean the welfare of people. And that is uh uh zeal for the salvation of people and that is what jesus is he is it doesn't matter how much he had to suffer but what matters to him is our welfare our salvation so it is just uh this is a human way of uh putting uh, we, we 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 use the expression putting emphasis on what is the will of god Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Tama. So, um, yeah. Parang, it's like uh, if you're really passionate of what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. tama yun. Uh, tama yun. nakita mo mali ang direksyon ng ginagawa ng mga, ng mga kasama mo, eh, talagang because of your passion to for the salvation of man at nakita mong lumiliko yes. at talagang lalabas na teka wag mo nang gawin yan magsilayos kayo oh. it has to be that way to leave a mark in their mind in their heart that uy nagalit ang bossing Actually, guys dito yung ano zeal for your house na zeal I, for I, your house ano ba yeah to consume me yon 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 Yun ang, yun, ano, yun. Yun ang pinaka... That is, that is the one that is, that is trying to emphasize. Yes, yes. First time I learned that, Father. Kailan nagbigay okay. sa akin yun. Thank you very much po. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Father. Thank you, Brother Benji. So, anyone else? Who was next? Okay po. So, Brother Jerome. Actually, I would like to, ano sana, as what is the connection pa of the first reading Exodus pero parang may nakita na ako eh <laughs> correct mo na lang ako father mm. ba base doon sa sinerno ngayon eh para na i-connect ko rin mm. eh. so kasi yun nga from the question din ni Kuya Benji about he made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area. And we know that the temple is our body. <laughs> so, if we, tayo, if we kill, ayan, or if we commit adultery, then Jesus made out of a cord, he whips out of our temple body. Parang ganun nangyari if you uh, God in vain, then dinudumihan mo rin yung temple area o yung hmm. sa katawad mo. So Jesus is making a whip, wants to make a whip out of your temple, your body mo. Hmm. If you do this, uh, covet your neighbor's house, covet neighbor's wife. Parang ganun po yung nakita ko hmm. doon base sa si, siguro, si nyo kanina. Siguro it would be good the context is, I, I suppose you are familiar with the story of the Exodus, you know, 
na how That's many over. times how many times uh Jesus uh, God <clears throat> showed to them that he is he is their God and he is he is God's people and he showed it in so many ways not only the uh the ten uh times that uh he showed that he is the he is the God of, of salvation but even after the crossing of the Red Sea you now how many times uh, Yahweh told them let them not forget that they were able to cross the Red Sea in dry water in not uh, save they cross it with there's no water with dry feet how many times he, he he told them but people were very hard headed and then they will complain wala tayong pagkain sana doon na lang tayo pambinigyan na lang sila ng pagkain then, then bakit lagi na lang mana binigyan sila ng karne and then bakit walang tubig lagi na lang complain instead of appreciating things that God has done to them lagi na lang silang nagrereklamo ng kung anong bang gusto nila so that is the context i think okay po father hanggang ngayon marami pa rin po nagrereklamo oh <laughs> <laughs> Kasama na tayo ro. <laughs> so, um, thank you, brother Jerome. Sister Lina, your hand is raised. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I think brother Jerome has um, partly answered. Mm -hmm. I would like to say that uh, this temple refers also to us that uh, our body a system a temple of god will be um, permanently clean so that he will dwell in us and and stay stay with us but if this temple is uh, not clean then he will i think has no um he will not. He has no. Um, he has no. Um, <clears throat> inspiration or something like that to enter in our, in mm -hmm. our, in our mm -hmm. heart. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, Ten Commandments will help us really to uh, cleanse out our soul so that we become temple of God. So, thank you, Sister Lina. Anyone else? Okay, so... Uh, Father, you were talking about the trajectory of this um, uh, Lent season, the, especially the first three Sundays, which is really to make us uh, intimately one with our Lord Jesus. So he has given all, to us all the graces, and you were telling us what is necessary is uh, our uh, our response. You quoted na nasa Diyos ang awa, nasa tao ang gawa. So all the graces have been given to us and we need to correspond to that um, grace. I remember po kasi dun sa Book of Heaven, it says na grace without correspondence is not developed into life. So hindi, hindi, na, hindi magawang buhay ng Diyos ito, which is really intended for us to, be, to have one life with our Lord, if correspondence is not there. So, yun, na, tama po yung sinabi niya na sa tao ang gawa. And gawa is correspondence, yung ating pagtugon doon sa mga grasya na ibinigay ng Diyos sa atin para makaisang loob natin siya, makaisang buhay. And uh, ang maganda po dito sa Divine Will, Father, 
maliwanag binibigay kung paano gagawin yon uh, Kaya po, slowly, sip by sip, as we always say, we're able to, we're given the capacity to respond to all these graces which have been poured out on us from the time we were baptized. So, sabi nga po lagi, it is uh, not us who will do it, but it is Jesus himself who will do it in us. So, the beauty of living fused in the divine realm. So, correspondence is really necessary. Titawing pwede mo rin i-consider yung mga suspended acts as graces na ano na hindi po na na recognize na walang correspondence sa grace. Tama ba? Mm-hmm. Uh, let's ask Father. Father, yung tanong po ni ano ni Brother Jerome. Father. Naka mute. Ay Hindi ko nakikita kasi itong mga ni Father. Okay. So, ang, we, we have to be careful kasi nga our correspondence may be the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that is that is what is many times happening, no? Uh, for example, uh, for example, uh, we work very hard to decorate the church. But then when I go home, I cannot see Christ in my wife or in my children. So mali yun eh. The correspondence is more in our relationship with one another. Not so much in cleaning and decorating the church. Of course, we should, we should do that as well. So uh, as a matter of fact, whatever we do in the church is just... Uh, an expression uh, of the fact that we would like our soul also to be beautiful. We would like our soul to be united with Jesus. We should like, uh, we like our, our human will to be united with the divine will. So, and, and, and uh, decorating the church is just an expression of what is outside. Uh, just as we also dress up properly on Sundays. But, what is important is our heart. Kaya nga sabi ko kanina, in this gospel, focus is on the on the on the temple which is our own heart. Mm-hmm. Yes po, Father. So, that is regarding correspondence. Father, this po dito sa divine will, um, from the very beginning, ang itinuturo pa agad eh, consecrate, sacrifice your human will in order to make it one with the divine will. Tapos mm. yung tatawagin ka agad ang divine will ni Jesus para po siya ang kumilos sa bawat kilos. So, in this way, um, nakakatulong po to really put in right direction yung yeah. pagkupon. Pero, yung... we can also misunderstand that you're giving up your will. You do not give up. You make your will coincide with the divine will. Mm-hmm. Ika nga, ika nga, the fusion, fusion. Mm-hmm. So, so don't don't give up your will because if you give up your will, you you cannot make any decision. Mm-hmm. You are so passive. Mm-hmm. Mali din yon. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's why the fusion. The word fusion is very important. The mm-hmm. two must must fuse together. Mm-hmm. Ah. Parang sinasample nyo rin Father yung sinasabi nyo yung nagde-decorate sa simbahan mm. pero sa ano parang yung gospel din po ngayon ano mm. yung sa scribes and the parish have taken their seat on the chair of Moses mm. sabi ni ano yun do not observe all things whatsoever they tell you, but do not follow their example. For they preach, yeah, but they do not yeah. practice. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and that is, actually, that is the one that many people are looking for from the leaders and also from, from the elders, uh, from the baptized. 
from people who go to church every day. They would like to see that. And they would like to see that in a transparent way, which is not easy, huh? Uh, it is also it is also a grace of God to in, that that enables us to see that, especially those who are trying their best. You see, simply, wala pa rin si Jesus doon, mm -hmm. pero you see characteristics which belong to Jesus. For example, you are trying to be patient. <laughs> you are trying to be nice. You are trying to be gentle to your enemies. These are all characteristics that pertain, that belong to Jesus. And Jesus would like to give that to us also. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Paul, Father. So anyone else who would like to clarify things with Father? So we'll continue with uh, our meditations. Father, tapos na po kami doon sa ano? Um, CCC. Hi, the teachings of the church. Apo. Tapos na po kami dito. Would you like to okay, say Okay, okay, okay. Okay na po. So, Sige na. So we focused, Father, on Jesus at the temple. The temple prefigures Christ. And then the church, no. the temple okay. of the living God. Okay. So, meditation one. Mm. We call on um, um, Sister mm. Aden. Mr. Aden. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Stan. Um, come, divine will, read on my reading. And understand what I am reading with Mama, with Mama Mary and Mamina Luisa. Me, in the light of the writings of the servant of God, Luisa Lazanta. Meditation 1. Book of Heaven, Volume 3, August 1, 1899, about purity. O oh man, I made you so that you might be my living temple, but you have made of yourself the dwelling of the devil. This morning, my most gentle Jesus, carrying me outside of myself, made me see the corruption into which mankind has decayed. It is horrifying to think about it. While I was in the midst of this people, almost crying, Jesus was saying, O oh man, how we have disfigured, deformed, this ennobled yourself O oh man I made you so that you might be my living temple but you have made of yourself the dwelling of the devil look even the plants by being covered with leaves flowers and fruits Teach you honesty and the modesty you must have with your body. But you, having lost any modesty and even the natural reserve you should have, have become worse than the animals, so much so that I have nothing else to which to compare you. You were my image, but now... I no longer recognize you. Even more, I am so horrified at your impurities that the mere sight of you now sits, now you sits me. And you yourself force me to flee from you. While Jesus was saying this, I felt tortured with the pain of seeing my beloved Jesus so embittered. So I said to him, Lord, 
you are right that you find nothing good in man anymore and that he has reached such blindness as to no longer be able even to keep to the laws of nature. So if you want to look at man, you will do nothing but send chastisements. Therefore, I pray you to keep your gaze on your mercy. And in this way, everything will be remind, will be remedied. As I was saying this, Jesus told me, Daughter, give me a refreshment for my pains. In the act of saying this, you removed the crown of thorns, which seemed to be sunken into his adorable head, and he drove it into mine. I felt most bitter pains, but I was content that Jesus was being refreshed. After this, he told me, Daughter, I greatly love pure souls. And just as I am forced to flee from the impure, I am drawn by the pure as by a magnet to dwell with them. To pure souls, I gladly lend my mouth to let them speak with my own tongue. Therefore, they have to make no effort to convert souls. With these souls, I delight not only in continuing my passion within them, and so continuing redemption. But what is more, I greatly delight in glorifying my own virtues in them altogether. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. O Supreme Will, come to reign upon the earth. Invest all generations, win and conquer all, and do not delay any longer. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Sister Aden. You're welcome, Paul. Father, can yeah. you give us your divine insight? Yeah, they are here. What is being emphasized? is especially uh, the sins of the flesh. Uh, the sins of the flesh which makes us horrible because we are supposed to use our body in order to love God, to know God, to love God, to serve Him and enjoy Him in the next life. But yet we are using our body more for our own self-satisfaction. And that is really the sin of impurity. Uh, and uh, it's the opposite to what God created us for. Uh, God, God gave us our body to be used to love one another, to love God, to serve one another. To be kind to one another, but we are using it for our own self self satisfaction only. That's why here, uh, Luisa is emphasizing more the virtue of chastity, uh, which should make us one of the aspects uh, that we become more transparent and being the image and likeness of God. But then here, uh, nowadays, for example, uh, they talk about uh, this, this LGBT, uh, the uh, desiring to be blessed, uh, same-sex marriage, and so on. Uh, we, are, we are completely changing uh, the whole plan of God about each and every one of us. So, uh, 
these are things which uh, which sadden Jesus. Even he says, the mere sight of you now she hates me. My goodness. It makes me uh, feel as if I, I want to vomit. Uh, that is a very, very strong word. On the other hand, uh, here at the end of this uh, paragraph, uh, you will do nothing but send chastisement. Therefore, I pray you to keep your gaze on your mercy. And in this way, everything will be remedied. In other words, since we cannot uh, we cannot present ourselves as a as a transparent image of the likeness of God, we just seek for God's mercy to make us straight. Again, the idea of the trajectory, you no, know, the the purpose. The, my don't we have a direction. The direction is to accept our our our, our weaknesses and make more more determined more decisive decisions to to be one to be, to have our will fused with the divine will to have our uh, our self seeking attitude turn into loving attitude for the good for god and for other people so that is uh, the trajectory that is that is the resurrection that we should be aiming at on easter sunday uh -huh. that's why on easter sunday we will be asked again to renew our baptismal vows. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you renounce Satan? And these are all things, impurities. Uh, here, here, <clears throat> Luisa uses the word the devil. Uh, your body is the temple of the devil. No, very, very strong words. And uh, I think it's good for us, not so much to condemn people, but to realize a weak man is, and that we should pray, not only for ourselves, but for one another, especially for those who are giving in. You know, cities are always are well known for nightlife, and you know what nightlife is, no? Everything goes, everything gets loose. Huh? Nothing is sacred anymore. Uh, so I hope uh, I'm I'm not condemning people who spend it. There are also people who, in spite of the temptations, they preserve the importance of purity, the importance of chastity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Pope Father. So, um, the Pope's uh, supplicants was that um blessing. The LGBTs is based on this blessing of mercy, uh, Father. Yes, yes, mercy. <coughs> As a matter of fact, we don't bless the union; mm -hmm. we bless the persons. Mm. Because the union is sinful. Mm -hmm. But people are sacred. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Paul Father. So anyone who would like to add something or ask questions? If not, we move on to meditation too. Um, Sister Lonnie? Sister Lonnie? Sister yes. Lonnie? Yes, po. Come divine wheel to the in my reading, Mama Mary and Mamina Luisa. Meditation 2, Book of Heaven, Volume 23, January 22, 1928. My will made of man its sacred and living temple in which to place its throne, its dwelling, its regime, its glory. The human will profane air of the creator. After this long, after this long days of privation of my sweet Jesus has passed, I was feeling tortured, exhausted of strength, 
so much so that as I had tried to write what he had told me in the previous days, I felt myself in the impossibility of doing it. And he, saying that I could not, and the great efforts I was making in order to write, came out from the depth of my interior, like one who is waking up from a long sleep and with compassionate tone told me, poor daughter, courage, do not lose heart. It is true that the martyrdom of my privation is terrible. And if hiddenly I did not sustain you, you could not endure it alive. More so, since the one who martyrs you is my divine will, which is immense and eternal, and therefore your littleness feels at the weight of its immensity and feels itself being crushed under it. But, but know, my daughter, that this is its great love for you, its little daughter, and therefore its light wants to restore not only your soul, but, only, but also your body. It wants to us the pulverized it, and animating the atoms of your dust, which is light, which is with its heat. It wants to remove any germ of humor, of humor, of human will, so that both your soul and your body, everything may be sacred in you. It wants to tolerate nothing, not even one atom of your being which would not be animated and consecrated by my will. Therefore, your heart martyrdom is nothing other than the consummation of what does not belong to it. Don't you know that the human will is the profaner of the creature? When it has its little ways, the slightest hole is true, which to enter into her, it profanes the holiest things the most innocent one. And my will, which made of man its sacred and living temple in which to place its throne, its dwelling, its regime, its glory, feels that its creatures gives the little entries to the human volition. It feels its temple, its throne, its dwelling, its regime, and its very glory being profaned. And when I took the ropes to drive the profaner out of the temple, it was the human will that I was driving out so that mine might enter, reigning and dominating. Therefore, my will wants to touch everything about you, even my very presence, to say whether it's dominion is absolute over you and you content yourself that it alone dominate you and have primary in, primacy in you. Everything in you must be divine will so that it may be able to say, I am sure she has denied me nothing, not even the sacrifice of the presence of her Jesus, whom she loved more than herself. Therefore, my kingdom is safe. On hearing this, I felt strengthened by his presence and at the same time embittered by his words. And in my sorrow, I said to him, My love, so you are not to come anymore to the little and poor excited one? And how shall I go on? How shall I be able to live without you? And Jesus no, no. And besides, where should I come from it? If I am inside of you, remain in peace. And when you least expect, expect it, I will reveal myself because I do not depart from you, but I remain with you. All, Queen Mama, Queen Mama. enclose me in your son, Jesus. 
the living temple of the will of God. O Supreme Will, come to reign upon the earth, invest all generations, win and conquer all, and do not delay any longer. Amen. Thank you, the Divine One, Sister Donnie. Father, could you please yeah. uh, help us with this meditation? Yeah. Here, uh, it, talks, it talks about uh, the martyrdom. Huh? Two things there. Uh, first, it talks about the human will is the profaner of the creature. Uh, I told you kanina, kanina that it is uh, our our decision is a product of our own human will now, and that is the one that we have to to straighten out. Uh, because if it is crooked, then it profanes the creature. If our human will is not based on the, the divine will, is not rooted, it doesn't coincide with the divine will, then it profanes the creature. Uh, so, as, as, uh, as I said kanina also, that the human will must be evangelized. Uh, that is the one that should uh, receive uh, the good news that our will, which is because of our concupiscence, is still crooked. Uh, so when when St. John, the evangelist says, I'm here to, to prepare the way of the Lord, to straighten the way, that is what he's talking about, to straighten our own will, uh, because our will is very uh, crooked. Instead of being other-oriented, it is very self-oriented. So that is the crookedness. We must uh, change that. And uh, now, here, what caused my attention also is this one. Poor daughter, courage, do not lose heart. It is true that the martyrdom of my privation is terrible. And if hiddenly... <laughs> I did not sustain you. You cannot endure it alive. More so since the one who martyrs you is my divine will, which is immense and eternal, and therefore your littleness feels all the weight of its immensity and feels itself being crushed under it. So here uh, it talks about again uh, when there is the fusion of the two wheels, uh, definitely we would feel that the divine will is immense. The divine will is uh, uh, much stronger. The divine will has more a wider perspective and it makes us open to, to, to the whole world, to the whole of God's creation. And that is the immensity and our human will become crushed. Now, when I say it's become crushed, doesn't mean that we have to, as I said, Kanina, we don't give up our will because the will is still needed because you have to make decisions. Kaya lang, that will must be somehow patterned after the will of this beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So uh, there is that, there is, however, that uh, uh, struggle. There is that struggle uh, when there is the fusion. There is that struggle because uh, uh, the divine will is immense. The divine will is uh, powerful. And the divine will is so great that uh, it opens up so many avenues to watch up. In other words, Niba, we always seek what our hearts are seeking. We always look for what our hearts are, 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 are seeking. And what our heart are seeking is really the divine will, is really the kingdom of God. That's the only thing that will satisfy us for good. That is what St. Augustine said, Too late have I loved you, O oh beauty, O oh love. And then he says, My heart is restless 
until it rests in you, my God. So this is the same feeling that uh, Louisa felt uh, in this conversation with Jesus. Huh? Uh, however, it's a struggle. It's not something that just happens. It is something that you have to, to uh, struggle with. And this struggle is the pain of the martyrdom. Uh, not that we are being deprived, but that uh, we think we think many times giving up the human will is deprivation. But in effect, actually, giving up our divine will, uh, our human will, is the realization of our of our human will because it is the divine will, the kingdom of God. Uh, so there is that uh, we should try to understand that and uh, we should uh, pray, we should pray that that will be realized in us and that we should have a little complaint. There will be always complaint. There will be always murmuring. There will be always saying sana. Uh, but uh, it, at the end of the day, we hope and pray that on Easter Sunday, everything is clear. That I have we have removed whatever makes it difficult for us to fuse com beautifully our human to the divine will. Mm -hmm. Thank you po, Father. So, Father, ito pong consummation. Mm. Consummation. So, the hard martyrdom is nothing other than the consummation of what does not belong to it. So, In other words, mm -hmm. uh, yun na nga, yung sinasabi ko kanina, na many times uh, uh, when we give up certain things according to our human will, akala natin na uh, we are depriving it's the deprivation in the A. Uh, as a matter of fact, it is consummating what doesn't belong to it, putting an end to that will to, 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 to that which will be a hindrance for the divine will. So consummation of what does not belong to it. It is what will hinder us mm -hmm. from uh, fusing a human to the divine will. Mm -hmm. And that is the martyrdom. Yes, po, Father. And the martyrdom usually is painful, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Normally, it's death most of the time. <laughs> Kasi parang nawawala sa atin yung akala natin, yun na yun. <laughs> <laughs> However, Jesus said, he who, who loves life will lose it. <laughs> Father Frank, na, nakaka-experience din po kayo ng, ng privation. Na? Privation. Ano po the, ba yung privation? Ito po ba yung dark night of the soul? Hindi, yung, yung parabang you are being deprived. Nawawala sa'yo yung what you think belongs to you. Nawawala sa'yo yung akala mo ay mahalaga. For example, uh, you are deprived of uh, 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 of three meals a day. Okay? Uh, however, there are people who are uh, fasting. I know of some people that every Friday during Lent, they only take bread and water. So that is a privation. However, that privation is a, a willful, voluntary. But just the same, you are still de deprived. Of, but normally, you have. Because usually, we eat three, that three meals a day. So pride deprivation is something of my uh, that I like uh, but uh, 
that is the, the meaning of, of, of abstinence or sacrifice uh, voluntary in this case yung privation is privation of Jesus wala si no. Jesus no no no, no 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 tama ba itong green na kinulayan ni mama ni mama <laughs> well no after this long days of privation of my sweet Jesus have passed iba yon iba to uh, mm -hmm. that is the same tama rin Long days of my privation have passed. Uh, no wala si Jesus sa akin for a long time because of my human will. <laughs> so because of that, I was feeling tortured, exhausted of strength, so much so that as I had tried to write what he had told me in the previous days, I felt myself in the impossibility of doing it. And he, seeing that I could not, and the great effort I was making in order to write, came out from the depth of my interior like one who is making up, waking up from a long sleep with a compassionate tone, told me, do not lose heart, no? So the, my, it's true that the martyrdom of my privation is terrible, no? Because we are still, we are still, uh, attached to many things. Uh, so we are not, it's not easy for us to give up things. And that is the, 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 the struggle that I was talking to, that I was mentioning a little earlier. And that struggle can make you so tired because actually, you think it is your efforts only. That's why it makes us tired. But if we think it is God's will, and God will enable us to do it, then not, we do not get tired. So again, the idea of self. Mm -hmm. Ano sa Tagalog yung profaner? Ha? Huh? Ano po yung profaner sa Tagalog? Profaner. Uh, usually, when you say profane, the opposite is sacred, no? Sacred and profane. Profane is... Uh, curse? Mga curse ba yan? No, it's not a curse. Ugly. Uh -huh. Ugly. It's profane means we have destroyed the beauty. Um, you profane a, a picture. You profane an art. No? So, uh, it's, uh, you have destroyed it. You put so many mud, so much mud in it. You put uh, so much paint and you destroy it. So, they, you profane it. Huh? So, the beauty which is sacred is lost. Making unholy. Mm. Actually, the reflection here is very deep, huh? Because we are now into the third Sunday of Lent. Mm -hmm. It's very, very deep now, very profound. Mm -hmm. huh? Baka malunod na tayo. Very deep. <laughs> ano yun? Pwede Jerome, ano yun? Baka malunod na po sa lalim <laughs> sabi ni Father Lumalalim Lumalalim <laughs> <laughs> ah, May Tagalog suggestion is sa lahula <laughs> So yon um Brother Jerome, Tagalog daw sinasa laula, sinasa laula yung temple. Parang walang galang. Parang walang galang. Yeah. At so, ay sinalahula. Mm -hmm. Parang walang galang. Something that is sacred. Opposite kasi. Eh, sacred. Eh. 
Nilabas na. Hindi, okay. This. Mm. Okay, thank you. So deep, sabi ni Father. Eh, in that depth, nandun si yeah, Jesus. The, the reflection is becoming deeper, huh? <laughs> yeah. And uh, in that depth, Father, we find Jesus. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> And it is in the depths of our interior. <laughs> but we have to That's give up true. so many things huh, in order to go to the depths. <laughs> <laughs> kaya, nga, kaya nga, Padre, nakita ko dito sa reading na ito eh. Uh, yung basic ba? The body is sacred. Mm. Not alone. Kapag, uh, let's say, I remember nung dati parang Dalawa singko lang mag-break ng green jokes. Mm. Madaling magsabi ng mga brown jokes. Para bang, ay, it's not doing any harm. Mm. Pero looking at this reading, if your body is sacred and you're saying green jokes, brown jokes, mm. or derogatory mm. statement against another person, I am also being destroyed. Sa laula. Nasa lahula ko sarili ko. Ay pagka papapangan sa laula. Pero pagka Tagalog, sa lahula. May age. Hmm. That's true, Brother Benji. Very true. Wala nang pagsalit ng mga bastos. Mga hmm. green jokes. Bawal na mag-isip ng magsalita ng hindi maganda sa kapwa dahil pati nagugustuhan handa ulit sabi na ni Brother Win bro tigil na natin umiiral yung human will natin nasisira tayo <laughs> and that's nice you know you have someone to 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 check on you and tell you that oh Sobra na tayo, human will na yan. Wala na tayo sa divine will niyan. And I, I, I like it that way. End of sharing. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Benji. Andito naman po yan, Brother Benji. Nakasulat din eh. Hmm. It, wants, ano ba, it wants to us to pulverize it and animating huh? the atoms of your dust. It yeah. wants to remove any germ or humor of human will so that both the soul and your body. So tama yun, pag mayroon po kayong dalawa dyan, parang pinopulverize ni Brother Ruin yung ano nyo. <laughs> Tikita na natin itong pagiging salaula natin. <laughs> yeah, right. Kaya sabi ko sa'yo, mahirap maging pari. <laughs> so, now, as Father had said, this is really very deep. Deep, so deep. Yeah, we're supposed to glorify our God with our body. Glorifying God with our body. <clears throat> oh, Sister Lonnie? Uh, yes po, may tanong po ako kay Father. Mm. Father, in my case, uh, I got married at 26 and then I got divorced at 36, 10 years after. Kasi uh, yung husband ko, ay hindi ba ang magmahalan da dapat dalawa, pero ayaw na niya eh. So, I gave him up. So, dahil mayroon naman siyang iba. And then he got married. But on my part, I stayed, ano, single mother sa mga bata. And then I did not seek for a relationship para maging maganda yung life ko. Kundi, I, ano ba, I pursue nagtabaho, Nag, ano, pero sometimes 
yung lagi kong ano kay Lord noon, that was my life before divine will. Lord, ito ba lahat kabayaran ng kasi I am not I was not a faithful doon sa ano no, 'di ba? Kung married ka, ay we got married in the church, kailangan i-pursue mo 'yun, yung ganun ba. So, 'yun yung mga questions ko noon. So, malungkot. Ano so kung ang mga bata ay hindi uh, nag nag-work out the way na yung yung family is ano ba yung yung complete so parang ako yung gumawa ng kasalanan ng lahat so i was taking it for me but then in the divine will what i've learned is that when you fused and then in all the readings that, like this which that we are reading and the teachings it yung ano yung Uh, hindi na ako malungkot uh, and uh, I am released to that uh, to that sorrow to that uh, yung mga ano ba yung mga questions na ano parang may answer po so ang, ang tanong ko lang po doon father uh, because Just in the divine will, being nothing, that is all, and no more preference. Nasa right track siguro po ako na po. <laughs> If I give it everything to the Lord, and then, yan po. I'm, I'm, in, hindi na po ako malungkot, and I'm doing, I'm trying my best to do that, what God wants for me to do. Yan po. So, anong, anong, anong tanong mo? <laughs> Kung nasa kasi, track daw ba siya? Kasi yeah. holiness can be attained in any situation. Whether you are married, you are single, you are married, you get separated, still holiness is still something that is, is awaits us. Then it can be attained always with the help of God's grace. Uh -huh. So, uh, no matter what situation you are in, we should never for we should never close our minds to the possibility of uh, attaining holiness. And for us, holiness is a fusion of my human. To the divine will. Yun ang ano ko. Uh, ah, yes po. Kasi kunyari yung sa mga isa, sa mga sister namin sabihin sa akin, nalimbawa, uh, Sister Loni, ako ay ano, ako ay na-bless na kasi mayroon na siyang bagong partner yung ganun ba and then oh. inuwanan ang anak and then i no and i uh, minsan na may rapan akong magsabi doon pero ang sasabihin ko lagi yung commandments ni ng Panginoon yung faithful ka po sa no oh. sa iyong gagawin When you got married and then uh, uh, ano so magstay ka doon pero kung katulad din ba sa pa, sa side ko na ano so I still consider myself as a married woman kaya ayoko din magkaroon ulit ng relasyon o kaya ay mati uh, Okay man Pero okay din po na sasama Na Kung halimbawa yung mga ano okay din po sila na sasama po So, sama sa sa another man <laughs> another kung hindi na nag-work yung ano yung yung kanilang marriage well ganito yon ay ah uh, sumat of fact this is where Pope Francis has done a lot uh, kasi it is true 
it can, or it can happen rather that uh, your your first marriage really was a failure, no? And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's a failure. So and then and you want you want to enter into another relationship. However, since you were married in the church, that first marriage must be declared null and void. And the Holy Father, Pope Francis, has made it very easy for us to attain that. So that you can get married to the second one. Because the first one was null. Was was it was not nullified, but it was declared null. For there are many reasons why it's considered null. No. So you can enter into another relationship and get married. But you have to go through this process of nullifying the first marriage. That's right. That's right. When people like that come to me, I always ask them, are you planning still to get married? If not, then forget it. Then you just move on. But if you are planning to get married, then you'll go through this process. Then uh, you can be helped. Pwede pala mag-asawa ulit pag na, ano ka, na-divorce ka sa isang, sa unang, sa marriage. Hindi, kasi nga, yung, 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 yung unang marriage, which happened in the church, must hmm. be declared null, null and void. Uh, and there are many reasons for that. And uh, the matrimonial tribunal will be the one to determine the reasons, the grounds for declaring it null and void. And then, so no, there is no more obstacle to getting married in the church again. Uh, you know what I mean? In the, yes, po, Father. Hindi ko po yung naano. Pero yung mga liba may magtatanong po sa akin. Then I, I know what I'm going to. But 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 if you don't want to enter into another marital relationship, then let it go. Leave it like that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, ko. And uh, but maganda rin. You are at peace. <laughs> I am at mm -hmm. peace. So long as so long as you are at peace and you are not looking looking for anything else, then that's it. Go ahead, leave it. Keep keep it that way. <laughs> I am fulfilled po. Thank you, Father. <laughs> there no uh, contradiction to the the, the law of uh, God of uh, Moses or the commandments. Is there no contradiction? Yeah, number number six. Six. Law number six. Number six? Yes. Um, but but uh, if that is already uh, cleared in the the law of yeah in Vatican, is that already all right to get married? No. No. Let me say. Ano ninyo? Kasi sa sa ang ang number six. Commandment daw ay against sa uh, <laughs> against dyan sa uh, to get married again after divorce. Ah uh, no 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 no. <laughs> divorce is wrong, okay? Yeah, and the yeah. church doesn't allow that. That's However, right. <clears throat> when cert certain marriages are entered into, and there are there are many reasons. No, for example, there was no freedom of consent. Okay. There was no marriage. Or second, that one was not uh, mentally capable of making decision when you got married. That when you got married, there was no marriage at all. Or you hid the fact that you are you are uh, infertile, and therefore you cannot bear a child, and you know it, and you you hid that fact. 
Again, there is no marriage. The fourth one, which is the one that is being developed more, is when you are incompatible. But usually, the incompatibility must be already established before marriage. But many times people get into marriage, and then they only realize that they are incompatible after they have gotten together. So that one can be also declared null and void. Huh? So, uh, and there are other reasons, no? So what the Holy Father did was to simplify the procedure in the church to nullify marriage. So that, so that if you want to get married and live and live according to the sacramental life, then you get null, you get that marriage null and void, then you can get married because you are no longer married. You see what I mean? Yes, Father. Yes, thank you. Did I confuse you more? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Although I don't have any. <laughs> loud okay, and okay. clear, Father. Loud and clear. <laughs> okay, question, okay. question, Father. <laughs> sa, sa case ni Tita Lonino, so sa at peace naman siya doon sa kanyang situation. Okay na yun. Say, say for example, if say not necessary siya ano but say uh decided to not really go into marriage but go into tawag ba nang tawag, tawag dito yung pagmamadre ayan pwede ba oh, yun yeah kailangan ba mag-null and void o hindi na kailangan na magano kailangan pa bu po ba yung null and void procedure o hindi na no need no need no need na oo oh. Ayo, pwede na po kayo magmadre, tita. <laughs> daughters of the ano yun, divine Benedictine daughters of divine will. Daughters of Saint Vincent de Paul. Baka yun na. Baka na yun. <laughs> Mas pola ang pare. Yung na, nasabi na it should be cleared within the church also. Kasi there is a matrimonial tribunal. So it Very will be tribunal. cleared. All clear. <laughs> Kasi pag uh, ano yan, uh, ipakita mo talaga na yung certification, my certification, it was clear already that you could marry again. You uh, you have the freedom. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, kailangan hindi or uh, pwede kang papasok sa seminaryo. Dapat ka rin malinis doon. Ay, hindi. Yung, <laughs> yung pagmamadre at saka yung pagpapare later on, kailangan yung establish na wala kang pananagutan na kailangan eh, iniiwanan mo. Na magkalang yeah. responsibility. So for example, mayro kang anak pa, may responsibility ka. Hindi eh, ubas na basta maiiwanan yon. Yeah. Pero yeah, Father, yeah. yung ano na lang magstay magstay na ano na single. I mean, uh, wala nang kasama. Okay uh, lang. Pero divorce ka, uh, ano, uh, eh, yeah. ilang beses ko na din yan, ano, is, lagi okay na yan, okay na yan. Yung stay, pare. stay alone. Stay single. Then, okay uh, na I yan. Also, na forgive din po ako. Kasi lagi ko din pong, ano, eh, ano ba yun? Eh, nagko-confess doon. Sabi, may pare nga nagsabi sa akin, limang beses mo na yan nabanggit. <laughs> <laughs> You are forgiven. <laughs> Thank you for Father. Okay, okay. Okay, so we can now proceed to meditation three. Um, Brother, Brother Jerome, would you read this for us? Come divine will to read in my reading with Mama Mary and Mama Mina. Meditation 3, Book of Heaven, Volume 33, March 11, 1934. How one does not live in the divine will, casts it into loneliness, and reduces it to silence. 
who the temple of God is, the divine will, temple of the soul, the little host, sign in order to know whether one lives in the divine will. I seem to hear the continuous echo of the divine fiat that booms in my soul, and with its invisible power calls my little axe into its own axe to make them one. And it seems to delight with its creature. It does not feel lonely. It has someone to whom to tell its joys and its sorrows. In some, it feels neither in loneliness nor reduced in sil to silence. On the other hand, with one who does not live in the divine will, it feels the weight of loneliness. And if it wants to speak and entrust its secrets, it is not understood because the light of its will is missing, which allows the creature to understand its celestial language. And oh, how sorrowful it remains that while it is all voice and all word, it has no one to whom to speak, even just one of them. O oh, adorable will, make me live always within you, that I may break your loneliness and give you the field to let you speak. But while my mind was wandering through the vast horizons of the divine fiat, my sweet Jesus, repeating his little visit, all goodness told me, my little daughter of my will, it is really true that one who does not live in our will casts it into loneliness and reduces it to silence. You must know that each creature is a new and distinct work that we have to do, and therefore new things to say. If she does not live in our will, we feel that the creature is far away from us because her will is not inside our own. Therefore, on her part, we feel lonely, hindered in our work, and if we wanted to speak, it is as if we wanted to speak to a deaf, to the mute. Therefore, one who does not live in our will is our cross. She hinders our step. She binds our arms. She knocks down our most beautiful works. And I who am the word, I am reduced to silence. Now you must know that the soul in grace is the temple of God. But when the soul lives in our will, God makes himself temple of the soul. And oh, the great difference between the creature, temple of God, and God, temple of the soul. The first is a temple exposed to dangers, to enemies, subject to passions. Many times our supreme being finds himself in these temples, as in the temples of stone, unattended not love as he should, and the little lamb of her continuous love, which she should keep in homage to her God, who dwells within her, without the pure oil, is extinguished. And if heaven forbid, she falls into grave sin. Our temple collapses and is occupied by thieves, our enemies and hers, who profane it and make havoc of it. The second temple, that is, God, temple of the soul, is not exposed to dangers. The enemies cannot get close. Passions lose life. In this divine temple of ours, the soul is like the little host that holds her Jesus consecrated within it, 
and with the perennial love that she draws, receives, and feeds on, she forms the little lamp, alive always, burning, without ever becoming extinguished. This, our temple, occupies its royal place, its fulfilled will, and it is our glory and our triumph. And the little host, what does she do inside this temple of ours? She prays, she loves, she lives of the divine will. She substitutes for my humanity on earth. She takes my place of pains. She calls the whole army of our works to form our cortege, creation, redemption. She holds them as her own and she commands over them and now she places them around us like an army in act of prayer of adoration now like an army in act of loving us and glorifying us but she is always at the head of them doing whatever she wants our works to do and she always concludes with her refrain so very pleasing to us your will be known and love and may it reign and dominate in the entire world so all the yearnings the longings the interests the cares the prayers of this little host that lives in our divine temple are for our fiat to embrace all put all the evils of creatures aside and with its omnipotent breath, form its place in the hearts of all, so as to make itself life of creature. Can anyone ever perform an office more beautiful, more holy, more important, more useful to heaven and to the earth than this little host who lives in our temple? Moreover, our love, our power, makes all the shows, all the industries, all the stratagems with one who lives in our will. It makes itself small in, and encloses itself in this soul in order to form its life and nothing is left of her but the guises to cover it. It makes life immense as it is and shapes itself a sumptuous temple to keep her safe inside of it and enjoy her company one who does our will is always occupied with us and we are always occupied with her therefore be very careful to let yourself always be found in our will all Queen Mama enclosed Jesus, the living temple of the will of God, in my soul so I may become the living temple of the Holy Trinity. O Supreme Will, come to reign upon the earth, invest in all generations, win and conquer all, and do not delay any longer. Amen. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Brother Jerome. Um, Father... So here we, we, are, we are given the two the two sides no of the coin. Uh one side is without Jesus, the other side is with Jesus. Uh the second part talks about the one with Jesus, no? Uh one that is traveling the his life always with Jesus. Uh, and uh Living with Jesus gives meaning to everything. Uh, that's why he talks about uh, uh, speaking and somebody's listening. No. However, without Jesus, everything will be meaningless. You, you are talking to, to, to nobody. That's why nobody will converse with you. Uh, because you are full of yourself. To begin with, whereas if you are with Jesus, then 
you have a good relationship to, to God, to creatures, to the world. You find beauty in our uh, in God's creation, and you find uh, beauty in your fellow fellow human beings. Uh, you even find beauty in your enemies because of Jesus. In other words, there is a big difference uh, in uh, living a life in which we are uh, trying to fuse. Uh, sabi nga, to 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 more and more uh, say it, be able to say as Saint Saint Paul, I live, but no longer I, but Christ lives in me, and that is the fusion of the divine will with the human will, and that is what we're talking about uh, uh, when we look at uh, God's creation. Always from the perspective of God's will, uh, and uh, from the perspective of uh, Jesus, who lends Himself to us uh, as a temple, as one who is uh, the sacred presence, no, something like the host uh, that is being uh, in our soul. Our soul is like the the one holding the host of Jesus, who is Jesus himself. So here he's trying to put the two contrasts, huh? two sides. Uh, one is uh, the one with Jesus, the one, the other one without Jesus. Huh? And that is what, what is important, is that we persevere in our life, hand in hand, united with Jesus. Because then we will, uh, as we say, we will breathe like Jesus. We will speak like Jesus. We will love like Jesus. Because it is Jesus who lives in me. No longer I, but it is Jesus who lives in me. So yun ang nakikita ko dito. Ano, ha? As mm -hmm. I said, uh, all this reflection is becoming very, very deep. Huh? And uh, what is important is to be able to understand the, the contrast. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what is being uh, portrayed in this last last reading we have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much, Paul Father. I know it's oh, not... Oh, na ako, ha? <laughs> yes, Paul <po>, Father. <laughs> exacto, exacto. <laughs> the Lord be Thank with you. Thank you so much. And before Almighty God spirit. bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Holy spirit. Amen. 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 Thank, okay. you Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Father, we love you in the divine will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Good night. Good night, Paul, Good night. Father. Good night.